Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co. And today we are covering Kickstarters that I am waiting on, which is another Patreon voted video that is not going to be a video so much as a series because, well, as I was putting this together, I realized that I have somewhere in the range of 50 to 60 pending Kickstarters, Kickstarter games that I am waiting on over the past two years, two and a half years. I think some go back as far as two and a half years that I'm just waiting on, waiting for them to show up. And well, it's too many to cover in one video. So today we're going to do 11 of them. Why 11? Because well, I went through my list and I found 10 and then I found an 11th that's almost showing up that's probably going to be here by the time you actually watch this video. And so I included that as a guest special, so to speak. But in any case, I'm going to go through these 11 in the order that I am most excited about them. Now, to be clear, from the full list of 50 or whatever, this is not the order I'm most excited. This, These are the oldest 11. And within those oldest 11, I'm going to go from the least excited to the most excited. Although I'll probably change my mind tomorrow because I do that. I am fickle. With that being said, let's start with Tidal Blaze, which is front and center as the game that I am least excited about. Don't get me wrong, still excited about it, still intrigued, still interested in the promise of Tidal Blades. The art is gorgeous, this is another Druid City games, the production is going to be off the charts, we already know this, Quackalop did an amazing unboxing video that made me more excited to get it, and yet it's the one that I'm least excited about. And the reason I'm least excited about it is the same reason that I, I actually ended up late backing this one. This is not one that I jumped in off the go because this is one that I was interested in and I looked at it and the lots of things seemed good, but then I had a bunch of concerns, concerns about the gameplay, concerns about whether it would be my type of game, not whether it's a good game, to be clear, but whether it's my style of game. And those concerns I eventually caved because new, pretty, and shiny, and I got it. And then later, recently, when Tom Vassell and the Dice Tower put up their four-way review, it kind of made me less excited about the game. Not because they weren't so hot in the game. To be clear, I don't care about that at all. The amount of times I've disagreed with the Dice Tower, it happens a lot. I love their content. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't help, sometimes it's completely opposite to my own personal tastes. But at the end of the day, the reasons they didn't like it, the reasons they were on the fence, are very much the things I was concerned about. Things like game length, rolling dice all the time, that the amount of dice rolling in this game, there's lots of ways to mitigate it, but the mitigation means you have to spend the tokens, you have to spend the resources to mitigate it, which means unless you, unless it averages out pretty quickly, pretty evenly, you're still going to be left holding the bag from the luck of the game. Now, don't get me wrong, the game is overall well-liked, it's overall well-received, even their reviews were like, it's a solid, you know, 7, 7.5 or whatnot. I think someone gave it an 8, I don't recall. But it's one that looks beautiful, looks pretty, and I very much am concerned whether it will be my type of game or not. Again, production quality off the charts. And as far as what I am excited about, and we'll get to it when it comes later, spoilers, but I am super excited for Wonderland's War. Wonderland's War is very much a game from Druid City Games or from... They have like two companies together. It's like Spellbound Games and Druid City Games. The whole thing's interesting. And that one, I am very, very much interested in trying. But Tidal Blades, despite being interested, despite wanting to see it, despite waiting for it to show up, and I believe it's shipping soon, I am still kind of a little at it. From there, we have Super Fantasy Brawl. And this is the one, this is the 11th. This is the one that is showing up this week. And it's kind of one that I'm less excited for. And the reason for that is just because I... I jumped in on this game because, well, minis and Mythic Games and all good reasons it'll hold its value, and I am excited about the potential for this game. At the same time, historically speaking, despite being, I mean, to be clear, I very much hope that I will love this game. I think it might well be an amazing game that I'm happy to have in my collection, etc., etc., all good things, whatever. But at the same time, skirmish games, two-player head-to-head skirmish games, have not worked out as often as they have. More often than not, that's the way to say it, more often than not, head-to-head -head skirmish games don't stay in my collection. There are exceptions, to be sure. Uh, Rum and Bones is a notable exception. Uh, other games that I can't think of offhand. I just played I just played uh, Dire Alliance, the two-player head-to-head version of it, and I really enjoyed that. Sometimes, if a game, if a skirmish game gives me enough complexity that I feel that the decisions really matter, then I enjoy it. But often I just feel it's too much just tic-tac, tic-tac, back and forth until someone wins. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's strategy, I'm sure there's depth, I'm sure there's nuance. And I'm also sure that I don't want to learn each character well enough that I have to play the nuances of the game and the character 15 times to appreciate the strategic depth of holding onto that card versus this. I like the strategy to come out of a skirmish game right off the bat. I like to see what's on the table. I love Rum and Bones. It is an excellent, excellent experience. 1775, you could argue, is a two-player skirmish game. It's really more of a map now. I don't know. It's a different kind of style. Mythic Battles, that's not true, Fantasy Brawl, I just made up Mythic Battles, Fantasy Brawl is a game, Super Fantasy Brawl is a game that I am very excited both by the miniatures, the presentation, the abilities, how it will tentatively play out, 
but it's the lowest or second lowest on my list only because of the fact that games in this genre historically have not done well for me. I'm not concerned about it holding its value. I'll be able to sell it if I don't like it. And rest assured, these games, same same deal as usual. If you watch my content, Kickstarter games, I try them as soon as I possibly can, ideally within the first two or three weeks, but for sure within the first two months. And that way, if it's not for me, I can turn around and find someone who it is a good fit for. And that is Super Fantasy Brawl. And I did a full video on this, by the way. Many of these video, many of these, these games in this order, I have done full videos on. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. Venice. This is one that I haven't talked about at all. And I am simultaneously super excited about this game, and also not. Now, this is one that I actually initially, when I when this campaign came out, when this campaign hit the shelves, when it was something that was available, it is one that I actually backed, then walked away from, and then I played V Commandos. While the campaign was still going, I played V Commandos. And I jumped all in on this game because Assassin's Creed is basically a reiteration of the Commandos. It's from uh, Triton. Tri I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly. Triton Noir, Noir, Triton Noir. Uh, but basically, basically, this is one that it's a re-implementation of V Commandos, taking many of the same mechanics from V Commandos. It's V Commandos is a stealth game. This is being, being Assassin's Creed, so it's combining those. It's a natural fit, and it's one that looks like it might be incredibly well done. If it's basically V Commandos with minis. Well, that's just a fit for me. I have no complaints there at all. My only concern about it, the only reason it's lower down this list, and again, to be clear, by the way, just to be very clear, everything I'm excited about, everything you see here I'm excited about, just varying levels of excitement. And this one, it's the amount of content, the content overload in this game does have me a drop nervous because as much, as much as I am intrigued by these games, as much as I like them, the actual theme of this game didn't do it for me. I like Assassin's Creed, but I liked it as a video game. I don't know if I really care about this as a board game. I do care about V Commandos, and this is a newer implementation. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll enjoy it. Maybe it'll be incredible. Or maybe I'll just wish for more V Commandos. Maybe V Commandos is just a better game for, for what I'm looking for. Either way, Assassin's Creed is one that I have plenty of time to wait on, because this one is, I believe, is officially is delivering June 2020, but that's probably not happening at this point. And that, by the way, that was a long time out when they announced it. So it's even going to be further out. But this tower, this tower looks cool. It's going to be boxes and boxes of goodness on my table. And hopefully I'll play it enough. I, I, I think I will. I really like V Commandos. Haven't played V Commandos in a long time. I probably should get that to the table. And that is Assassin's Creed. Next up from there, we have Dwellings of Eldervale, which I also did a full video on it, full should you back it or why I backed it with late pledge details and all that. And this is one that I'm excited about. And and from here, I guess, really, again, everything on this I'm excited about. I just tried ordering it as much as possible. But Dwellings of Eldervale is one that is more likely to hit the table. I find, I, I found consistently over time that I get pulled in by these giant boxes. I get pulled in by Storm Sun. I get pulled in by Madara. I get pulled in by Assassin's Creed, by Seventh Citadel. I get pulled in by all these gigantic experiences. But at the end of the day, the ones that tend to last more are the ones that I can get to the table more consistently, more frequently, without having to commit to a long game. I can play Dwellings of Eldervale once today, once next week, put it away for six months, and then give it another shot. You can't do that with a game like Assassin's Creed. I mean, you could, but then you may as well restart because you have to pick yourself up again. These games, these one-shot experiences, tend to do significantly better for me, and so I'm excited about Dwellings of Eldervale. I think it'll be a potentially a good fit for my group. It very much has elements of different games that I think will be a good fit. The, 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 the actual miniatures, like I said in the, my full video, that didn't do it for me. The sound effects were, you know, maybe it'll do it, but I imagine it won't. I don't know. Lots of stuff in this about this game did not pull me in, but the full package of it did. I am excited about Dwellings of Eldervale. I'm excited about the tableau building, the 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 uh, whole the worker placement aspect, the everything about Dwellings of Eldervale. I, it's it's a, this whole elemental tech tree advancing and elemental power. There are a lot of things about Dwellings of Eldervale that make me think it might be a great game to hit my shelf on a regular basis, or it might not, and I'll sell it and trade it and move on to the next one. Which brings us to Ignite. Ignite is a deck builder by Ginger Snap Gaming. They currently have two games coming. They have a uh, Rocket Cats, which is a kind of party, Robo Rally style game. And then they have a 4X Bag Builder that I can't remember the name offhand, but they have all those coming to Kickstarter. And Ignite is a, mesh, is a mashup of deck building, which I love, and Skirmish, which I'm on the fence about and need the right fit. But I think Ignite will work for me, and I think it will work for me because of the fact that what I specifically don't like about skirmish games, and take Unma Unmatched as a good example, I don't like the fact that when you play your deck, you're kind of just a victim to whatever the game gave you. You're, well, I drew these cards in the right order, and I obviously played that. I like decisions in games. I like to feel like everything I do matters, 
And deck building will give me that. When I can move in Ignite, I will feel it was my choice, my deck that I built. When I can attack, I will feel it was my deck, my choices. When I sit there and push you into the fire and set something on whatever, or catch you in a net and then drag you along, I don't know. When I do all these combo things, and there are a lot of combo things, when I do that stuff, I will feel it's my choice because I built that deck. And that, to me, kind of takes away from the whole tit-tat skirmish thing that I tend not to be a fan of. The fact that I'm in control of my own destiny as I build my deck makes me feel like I am victim to what happens next. Sure, there's luck. Of course there's luck in deck building, which order you draw the cards, all that stuff. And I'm fine with that. I don't mind luck in games. I just want to feel like in some way I was in control, and I wasn't just being played the hand I was dealt. So if I built that hand, if I built that deck then they'll, that'll do it for me. And this is going to be obviously similar to Ascension Tactics, which came out after or before, I guess, technically... Well, Ascension Tactics came out after, Ignite came out before, but Ascension came out before, either way. But yeah, I'm pretty excited for Ignite. I know they have expansion content planned as well. Uh, the miniatures didn't really do it for me at all. I, I might do a full Should You Back video on this or why I backed it, we'll see, because I believe the Pledge Manager is still open, and if it is, well... Maybe I'll see if I can get one of these coming soon, but uh, for the next week, or we'll see, we'll see when it comes. But either way, that is basically Ignite, and that's what I played, or why I'm excited about Ignite. From there, we go to Valor and Villainy, Minions of Mordak. And this is one which I did do a full video, a full why I backed it or whatnot. And basically, this comes down to, this is a game that I am excited to play with my family. It might be a great game for my friends as well, but that wasn't why I bought it. I bought it because I thought it'd be a great game to play with my older kids and my wife and set up on the table, and I'll be Mordak because I'm the evil, terrible one, of course. And they'll sit there and gang up against me and figure out what they need to do to try to win. It, it Don't get me wrong, I think the target audience for this is not necessarily family age, but it does look like something that could be a good gateway to that. It looks like it could be good for my older kids. Sure, it says 12 plus over here, but my daughter, who is 9, has been playing anything from... 15 plus her whole life. These are just suggested whatevers. But yeah, Valor and Villainy, like I said, I did a full video on this, so you can look that, you can check that out if you want the full whatever. But this is a game that it's a one versus many, tons of abilities and spells, and I love that. It looks like it's fun. It looks like it's the kind of game where you're just going to play things that are fun. You're going to do things that are fun. I don't expect this, or think it will be, the most heavily balanced game where I can say, oh, it's like Innocent Blood Rage, and this is so nuanced, and that strategy beats this strategy, and this is well balanced against that. I'm not expecting any of that. I'm expecting cool minis, cool minis, and to be able to play spells that make you feel like you're doing fun things. Past that, I don't really care. I'm looking for Valor and Villainy to deliver a fun time, not a well-balanced, amazing time. To be clear, I'm not saying it isn't well-balanced. I'm just saying that that's not why I looked for it. I looked for it for the fun miniatures. Oh, and Unicorn. We got a, no, not Unicorn. A horse, which is not a Unicorn. Something close to a Unicorn. Close enough. I'll take it. In any case, that is Valor and Villainy and why I'm excited about this one and still waiting on this one. But then again, everything on this list I'm still waiting on, so that's not a surprise. And then we move to Bloodborne, which is another one that I had a full video on. After this, we have four more, of which one of those four I've done a video on. The rest I have not. And Bloodborne, the board game, I am incredibly excited for this one. Now, this very much does fall into that genre of being a significantly longer, sprawling game that might just be overwhelming for what I want out of it. But they also have the Chalice Dungeon and the One-Shot Adventures, which really was a strong sell for me. The idea that I could play a game in one shot is very much a sell. It's very much a reason why I am more intrigued in this game. Will I potentially break out the giant campaign and slowly play a solo game as I go through, or maybe not solo, who knows, as I go through the, 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 the various adventures and everything else? Maybe. But I'll start by playing a Chalice Adventure. I'll start by playing another Chalice Adventure. I'll see how much this game pulls me in, how much I'm excited or intrigued by this game, and whether it's one that I want to continue to invest my time and energy into, or whether it's one I want to move on from. That is good, but hey, there's lots of good games, and we have to pick and choose. Bloodborne is very much a game I am excited about, despite not liking the PC game, which I recall mentioning in the past I didn't like the PC game, or not PC, sorry, the PS4 game, and I recall mentioning that in the past and getting a lot of people who are, how dare he, how dare he not like the masterpiece that is Bloodborne. I don't know. I just didn't like it. In any case, that is Bloodborne. I am excited about Bloodborne. It's come on, which means it's going to be an amazing pleasure. It'll hold its value. The miniatures are going to be off the charts. I mean, look at this little watchdog of the old lords. If you've watched the video of, because I never actually did it, if you watched the video of them fighting them, this, this thing looks cool. Can you imagine dancing around this with your hunter figure and playing your cards to try to manipulate and win that battle? It'll either be super exciting and amazingly fun, or I just won't be interested and I'll move on to the next game. And speaking of the next game... We have Wild Ascent, 
And this, by the way, this is the game I've been waiting on the absolute longest from all the games that I've been waiting on. And I've talked about this already. I just did a video on Storm Sunder. I just did a video on top 10 games uh, you shouldn't have backed, top 10 Kickstarter you shouldn't have backed. And Wild Ascent is in there. I'm excited about Wild Ascent, to be very clear. It's pretty high up this list, all things considered. But at the end of the day, it, it's a game that hasn't delivered. So the cool minis, great. The fact that it looks like Kingdom Death Monster without Kingdom Death Monster is great because I like the idea of Kingdom Death Monster. I don't like the world of Kingdom Death Monster. While the scent looks far prettier, it has this idea of a camp phase. It has two players, there are two player head to head. It has many different ways to play the game. All of them look appealing to me. All of them look interesting to me. The card art looks great. The miniatures look great. The board art I was a little mad on. But the overall experience looks like something that I might really enjoy if I ever get to play it. The minis are amazing, to be clear. The minis are gorgeous. We've seen pictures or photos or videos of the production quality miniatures. I am super excited. But super excited does not mean I will like this game. It just means I'm excited for this game. And my excitement hasn't gone down. I remember when I first backed this game, I, I showed the video to my wife. I, I watched the video of the game. I watched this whole video and I showed it to my wife. And she said, this is when I was first really getting into this Kickstarter addiction. And she said, how can you be so excited about something that's not going to come for a year? I was like, because a year from now, I'll be excited about it. A year from now, I'll have it. And that was like two years ago. So time has gone on. Time has moved on. But my excitement for these games does not go down with time. It's rare that I look at a Kickstarter I backed and I'm like, you know what? Kind of not interested in that one anymore. It goes up and down to an extent, but I'm as excited about Wild Descent as I was when I first backed it. I'm just waiting longer and hopefully it will deliver on what I want out of it. And if it doesn't, again... You move on. Not all the games are meant to stay, at least for me. My collection rotates all the time. I consistently play things I'm excited about, and they consistently show me that they are amazing and I should have been patient, and they also consistently show me that they're not for me, and both are true, and that's totally fine. Which brings us to Tainted Grail, a game that I chose two-wave shipping and regret it. 100% regret cho choosing two-wave shipping on this one. And I chose two-wave shipping because of the fact that I was like, you know what? I have so many incredible games I'm knocking to the table, and that's true even now. I have, I have Gloomhaven, I have... Other games, all, there's tons of Zombicide, I have Massive Darkness, which I stopped playing because Massive Darkness 2 was announced. I have so many different games that I still am not playing as much as I would like to. So I wasn't in a rush. I'll, I'll play Seventh Continent in the meantime, there's no rush. But I hear a lot of good things about Tainted Grail. I've heard mixed things too, to be clear, but overall I've heard a lot of good things. On B Board Game Geek, it's rated higher than Seventh Continent, which is good. I mean, that's, that's great, right? The overall experience that this is selling you on is one that I'm super excited about. This is by Awakened Realms, by the way, and if you haven't watched it yet, uh, please understand that Awakened Realms is going to be launching its own Kickstarter competitor. GameFound, which is currently a pledge manager, is going to be a full competitor to Kickstarter, and I assume all of Awakened Realms games will be in, uh, launched on GameFound as time goes on, and hopefully many others as well. I'm looking forward to that being in this space, and that's a little plug for GameFound right there, not sponsored by any means. But in any case, Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon, is a game that I am excited about the story it promises. I am intrigued by the PC game, to be clear, and if anyone's actually played both, if you, if you are someone who's played the PC game and the, the real game, let me know in the comments down below which one's better, which one you prefer, why or why not, because I know specifically the 7th Continent, I said I kind of feel I would prefer 7th Continent as a PC game, but with Tainted Grail, I kind of want to experience it first. I like experiencing things in person first. I like the tactile feel. If it proves to be a game that I like what it's promising, but don't like the hassle of the cards and the setup and the this and the that, then I'll probably give my uh, PC game, because I have the code, I'll give it a shot, but for right now, I've been holding off. I want to get this game. I want it to show up at my door, and I want to play it. I want to play Tainted Grail, I want to see whether it's a game for me or not, so, like all these others, so I can see what I want to do next, whether whether it's a game that I will look forward to every single step in that adventure, whether I will play one adventure, kind of want to play the rest and just knock it to the table, or whether I'll play a few rounds and be like, you know what, I'm cool with Seventh Citadel, that will do it for me, and time will tell and we'll see, but that is Tainted Grail. And from there we get to the second most excited, that from all these, this is actually one of the ones that I am particularly excited about. This is Alter Quest, which as of the time of recording this video has started to drop, I think in Australia in particular. People are for the first time starting to get their pledges. I am excited for mine. This is by Blacklist Games. I am incredibly excited for Alter Quest. This is everything HeroQuest wanted to be. Not just the old HeroQuest, but the new HeroQuest, which is basically the old HeroQuest anyway. Alter Quest is what Hero Quest was meant to be, but for people who play these kinds of games, and it's not meant to be a diss on anyone who likes this, that, or the other, but at the end of the day, Hero Quest does not stand up in today's games. And Alter Quest is coming from a, a degree of fan service to the original, and I did a full video on this one as well, by the way. But the game looks great. 
the miniatures look much better than previous Blacklist games to the point that this launched a whole Blacklist miniature series. I already plugged the Dire Alliance uh, earlier in this video, but I'll plug it again. Dire Alliance will be launching the horror set in that next series. So tons of miniatures from a company that wasn't previously known for miniatures. We'll see how time plays out on that. But the game looks great, and it has that 3D furniture. The best thing about HeroQuest is the 3D furniture. I've started using it in all the rooms of my house. HeroQuest is a game that I am excited about. Not HeroQuest, I lost. You see, that's what happens. Alter Quest is a game that I'm excited about. The board looks colorful. The minis look great. The, the style of MDS, the modular deck system, combined with the style of what this game is trying to do, I, I think it'll be exciting. I think it'll be for me. And this is coming from someone who, I got rid of Street Masters. I liked Street Masters, I thought it was great, but I eventually moved on from it, and I thought that, for me, Marvel Champions gave me a very similar feel. Different, but very similar feel, and I preferred Marvel Champions. Uh, but when, in the case of Alter Quest, I'm excited about Alter Quest. I, I want to see what it does. I want to see what it does well. I know that the early reviews that have started to come in have already been incredibly positive, and it only hypes me up even further. Again, that excitement does not go down. The excitement goes up. I am excited about Alter Quest and all the things that I got with it. I did not get the playmat, which I have no regrets on, because I don't store... I like playmats in theory, not in execution, not in practice. And that basically is Alter Quest. I'm incredibly excited for it. I want it to show up. I can't wait to bring it out and then see whether it's an abject failure in my expectations or something I'm super happy to own. And that brings us to my last one. The one that if it lets me down, I will be devastated. I will be devastated if Kingdom Rush lets me down. And the reason for that is because Kingdom Rush is a polyomino tower defense game. I love polyomino games. I love the concept of tower defense games. I haven't actually played a lot that I really enjoyed, but I love the concept of tower defense games and applied to board games. I love polyominoes. This game looks light and fun and engaging and it has minis and I don't even care about the minis because I'm more interested in the polyomino aspect. You have these hordes of little polyomino stuff marching towards your stuff. You build your towers and upgrade your towers to slowly but surely lay on flames and, and the arrows and all these different things against this polyomino little puzzle as they march towards your board. Everything about Kingdom Rush appeals to me. I put out a video a long time ago about the top five video Kickstarters I was excited about. And Reichbusters. Reichbusters was on that list and that one let me down. But, but Kingdom Rush. I am excited about Kingdom Rush. I want this to be another polyomino game that I love. Because historically speaking, I have loved polyomino games. I, I, I weigh them up against each other. What do they bring to the table? What do they not? Why do I want this one versus that one? And sometimes they lose in that sense, to be sure. But a tower defense polyomino game I, I can't even compare that to anything i have at all and so if this game is good it will hold its own just because of the nature of the category it's in i mean who thought to add polyomino to a miniature based tower defense game whoever it is by the way thank you because i shouldn't say thank you hopefully thank you if i like this game Kingdom Rush is a game that I am incredibly excited about. I, I, I think it looks adorable. I think I'll be able to play it with my kids. I think I'll be able to play it with my friends. I might even be able to play it solo. Who knows? I'll for sure be able to play it with my wife. It just, it has all these things that I like about games, in theory. In practice, it might be the worst thing I've ever played. Because, again, Kickstarter lives as a thing that it's exciting. It breathes energy into us. We pop bomb. We check the update. We look at our games that we're waiting on. It's addicting. This whole thing is addicting. And I focus on the value in all my other videos. I focus on the value aspect because I love the addiction of it. I love the hype. I love the journey of being excited. When someone else goes on an impulse buys on Amazon, they spend 50 bucks and they get their shoes or whatever the next day. And then that whole cycle is done with. When you do it on Kickstarter, you spend 150, 200, 300 dollars. But for the next 30 days, you're along for this hype train of excitements and updates. For the next year, you see occasional updates and you see this like thing that you're waiting on, you're excited for. And then it finally shows up and you read the rule book. Maybe you play it right away. Maybe it sits on your shelf. The degree of enjoyment you get out of that journey is, is, is huge. It's a big thing. I, I really like it. I also don't want to lose the $300, which is why I focus on the value proposition. Because at the end of the day, at the end of that journey, if it's not for me, I want to be able to resell it, to trade it. I don't even care if I lose a little bit, that the fun was worth it. The fun was there. It is completely 100% an addiction. And I just try to focus on making sure it's not a harmful addiction to my life. And that's a little bit of an unplanned twist to my top 10 Kickstarter games that I'm excited about. But nothing, you know, unusual. I do talk about value. I do talk about games. But basically, that's it. Kingdom Rush is the one that I am most looking forward to. Uh, the miniatures are okay. They look cutesy. I don't know how good they'll actually be compared to other miniatures. But the gameplay... The gameplay looks like it'll be right up my alley. Light enough to get to the table. Uh, polyomino enough to really enjoy pulling out. I hope you don't let me down, Kingdom Rush. I hope you don't let me down. Until next time, 
I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Uh, what, I, what I started, I'm probably going to start doing actually is I'm probably going to start doing a monthly video on the Kickstarters I've backed this month uh, to keep up to date, to, to a bit of a roundup of this month's Kickstarters. I think that would be, uh, well, in line with the actual stuff. It's e it gets easy to get lost as you go week by week and I talk about all the Kickstarters. I think a roundup at the end of each month of here's what I backed in September would be actually a fun video to watch or fun for me to put together, but it wouldn't take away from the follow-up videos of how well Kickstarters actually did once they actually show up on my doorstep. Uh, expect a few more videos like this, four or five of them, while I slowly go through my backlog and you get a better feel for the things that I have backed over time before I started doing this whole YouTube thing and really, really getting sucked even further down this rabbit hole. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know in the comments down below. Uh, first of all, on uh, Tainted Grail, like I mentioned already, in terms of the PC versus the, the actual game. But anything else? Which of these are you excited for? Which did you back? Which ones do you feel like you're really upset you missed out on? I will note, Kingdom Rush is available for pre-order. You won't get everything, I believe. I have to double check. I'm pretty sure you don't get the Spider Goddess expansion, which was Kickstarter exclusive. But you can get most of the stuff, so that's fun, right? But in any case, until next time, have a good one.